Gruber, uh, who you know and love on threads, the obvious truth is that we all, including Apple, miss Steve Jobs. And then Walt Mossberg, also on threads, quoted Gruber and said this, absolutely true. The post Steve Jobs Apple has been a phenomenal money-making machine and has, had, and has had a few notable product successes like AirPods and the Apple Watch, but it hasn't replicated the big game changer product experience of the Jobs era. So I was just curious as someone who's been around for a while, what's your reaction to that line of thinking? Like how might Apple be different today if Steve Jobs were still part of the brain trust? I think it's actually a little unfair to Apple, to be totally honest. The The problem here is if the iPhone never existed, the size and scale of, I mean, the iPad is hard to define because it really is a big iPhone in many respects, but just take Apple Watch and AirPods is mm -hmm. incredible. Like these are incredible businesses. They just don't seem as incredible in the context of, the greatest business of all time, which is the iPhone. And, and, you know, and people say, oh, it was so brave of Apple to watch the iPhone and make you didn't need an iPod anymore. They killed their iPod business. Yeah, they killed their business with a device that cost twice as much and had higher margins, right? Like, like it's, it's impressive that they did it, to be clear. You see companies that have trouble watching a better product because they have like a fiefdom inside that blocks it to protect their sort of business. They did mm -hmm. kill the iPod. But just to be clear, they killed the iPod with a better product that was more profitable. So, like, 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 and and the the iPhone is the greatest product of all time. As I mentioned, it was because it's the thing about software is software you can differentiate endlessly. You can do whatever you want. The problem with software is it's infinitely replicable. Its sort of economic value is zero. Right? Hardware, it's easy to commoditize, which is bad. What's good though, it's a physical device which you can charge a lot of money for. Right. The iPhone combines them, right? It has differentiated software on what could theoretically commoditizable hardware, and then it sells it at a huge premium, and it's done in astronomical numbers. No one ever thought – again, we go back a decade. No one ever thought that Apple could have 50% or 30% worldwide, over 50% in the U.S. sort of market share one company. They're like, no, mm -hmm. not going to work. It has to be modular. No, Apple proved them all wrong. And, and and has done so well raising prices to to from a sort of business perspective, well delivering more features. Everyone talked about the iPhone, and this is honestly the biggest critique I would have on my article. People were saying the iPhone is done with innovation like a decade ago. It it, it has kept going, right? And and I think the point of my article, and I'm not sure I was clear enough on this, is it's less that the iPhone can't differentiate as a product, more that can they differentiate within the iPhone line? Like the pro, yes. the pro line feels a little dead to a certain extent, right? And, and all the differentiation is software driven going forward. The more that each the, generation, the to, to Kevin's point, I mean, like 15, is it going to be really that different from 16? Probably not. Right. Because but which, the performance is already at such a high level that there's right. only so but, much but you can improve. But the other beautiful thing with the iPhone is it wears out. It you drops, screen breaks, battery goes <laughs> yeah, bad, right? It, it, and it's such an essential product. You're going to immediately when it breaks, you're going to go get a new one. You're not going to wait a week. You're not going to do research. You're just going to go to the store and get one because you need it. It's an incredible product. And so I think this does a disservice to what a, a great business Apple Watch and AirPods have been by and it's because it's being compared to the iPhone. And mm -hmm. so I would say that that's my first sort of defense of Apple. Uh, number two is to the extent I agree it's really about the Vision Pro in, in that like that is a product that seems to like like the critique of the Apple Watch, even the early part you know, part of the Apple Watch where, you know, they didn't know what it was. They had to figure it out. Oh, it's a health and fitness device. But maybe Steve Jobs would have helped them refine that sooner. He probably wouldn't have let them launch a $17,000 gold version. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it would have, you know, and so maybe like Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was an editor. Like, 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 right. and I think actually the person that suffered the most from Steve Jobs leaving was Johnny Ive, who needed an editor, I think. Like, and the, the Macs wouldn't have gotten in the bad state they were, I think, if Jobs was around as, as they did sort of in, in the mid-2010s. And, and the Apple, the Vision Pro needs an editor. 
should it be a four, $4,500 device? What could have been cut? What should have been cut? I, I think he probably would have enforced a lower price point. I think he would have given it a reason to exist. And critically, he would have pulled together the company behind. If they're going to launch this, it's going to be a whole company effort. There's going to be content to watch. There's going to be apps that are compelling. There's going to be these bits and pieces. It's not going to be this, what it feels like, this isolated project on the side where kind of lost budget control and also lost and, and had insufficient internal support and maybe jobs wouldn't have launched it at all it's it's it's, it's possible i mean so i i think that's a great example of of where he is definitely missed but yeah. the other bit is again once you reach once you launch the iphone there th just to go back to point one what is better than that and and, and the way apple has to the last podcast point, the way they've diversified the models and the colors and, and shipping all over the world. I was complaining about bands, right? That, that, that whole bit about you know, my confidence in buying an iPhone. An iPhone does have different models that have different bands and different supports. And they do have a dual SIM model in China that doesn't have eSIM, at least in Taiwan it has both. There is, is a lot of all this complexity. And, and number one, that's really hard. Number two, Apple does it better than anybody else. It's very clear to me from like sort of the last week or two of sort of, again, looking at the Android space, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there, there is a, there, there, it's really easy to idealize someone that's not there. Your counterfactual is always sort of this amazing world. And, and I didn't expect to come on this podcast today especially after writing a some it wasn't critical of apple but just sort of like an inflection point no, article of apple realistic about where they apple's are, yeah. it like tim cook has done an incredible job what, what, like the the it, it really is true and, and again i have lots of critiques i'm frustrated about the app store for, for various reasons but but there's a lot of like really impressive things that have been done in that bit and i'm just not sure what people expect they're, they're like yeah there there's this Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Three, you got 30 something. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yeah, no, I mean, that was my reaction is when you look at, first of all, in terms of the, the Vision Pro, if Steve Jobs were in charge for the Vision Pro launch, Steve Jobs would have been wearing a Vision Pro as they announced it. I'll never forget Tim Cook not wearing a Vision Pro. Still think that was incredibly lame, but it is what it is. My reaction to some of the nostalgia this week, though, I feel like what people actually miss is not necessarily jobs, but just the sense of limitless possibility that existed 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, because back then all these paradigm shifts were new and we were just entering them and all of it has happened now. I mean, this was like, it's hard to find a new life altering piece of hardware because Apple already invented the life altering piece of hardware and all our lives have been altered and trying to do something that's like even more groundbreaking. Like Huawei had the trifold smartphone unveiled this week, which did really impress Twitter. Um, but I don't know why that needs to exist. And the iPhone <laughs> yeah. was a situation where like Steve jobs thought of a product that needed to exist, the iPod, and then thought that can be a phone and, and created a new market. It's hard to do that every 10 years. And so I can't really blame Apple for shifting into a different phase of its company's life cycle. And I don't think it would be all that different if jobs were still in charge because you can't just continue to reinvent the way society interacts with technology every 10 years. Yeah, I mean, this gets into like a broader like – an all time philosophical debate, which is sort of like the great man versus like the, 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 the tides of history or whatever is a uh, great man theory. I think it was called like versus like structural forces. And the answer to a lot of these philosophical debates is, is probably a little of column a, a little of column B. Like there are structural changes and forces that are happening, but it does take someone to sort of see and seize the moment and, and blaze the path. And, and to go to this point, like Apple is not necessarily first to a lot of this stuff, right? Like, like you see, you go back to the Mac, like the Mac, you know, the Xerox Park had the first sort of GUI, right? But they, mm -hmm. but Jobs identified that and then brought it to market in a compelling way. And this is very underrated in terms of innovation. It's not the, we overrate the invention and underrate the commercialization and, and 
and downstream commoditization that br- actually brings it to the masses. And, and in, in the case of, of the Mac, uh, Jobs's role and Apple's role was to the commercialization. It was Microsoft that had the sort of commoditization and, and sort of brought the GUI to everyone, right? You fast forward to, to the iPod, there were MP3 players out there. Jobs was on stage in 2020 pitching iMovie as the future. You can bring your camera over and plug it in. No, 20, 2000, sorry. In 2000, just a real mess up by us there. Uh, it was one of those zero years. Yeah. Uh, he, he brought, he brought you, you import film from your camera and you can edit it and you can print a DVD. The future is movies. That was like, that was the real focus. And, 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 and jobs admitted in sort of an interview later He's like, suddenly I looked up in 2020 and Napster is taking off and there's like the, these MP3 players and, and all these sort of things. We missed it. We missed mm-hmm. the boat. And, and, and part of what made Jobs impressive wasn't that he invented MP3s or he invented CDs. It's that he built a company that could pivot in a matter of, of, of weeks and months such that like six months after that that keynote that jobs himself would say a couple years later was totally misguided and missed where the world was going they had a new keynote where they announced a new product called itunes they went out and bought some software and they they converted it they made it into itunes the next month one of their executives john rubenstein was in was in in japan he's getting a tour of toshiba they're like oh yeah we made this little hard drive but no one wants it It, it, you know the people all the laptop makers say we don't need it that small and it's too slow and he's like i know what we can use it for six months later seven months later so it was january or february to, to september apple in months created the ipod like it's incredible it's unbelievable and, and and that wasn't the invention of the category but it was the creation of an engine in apple that could identify and harness and commercialize sort of a new opportunity and in that case are reportedly over some of jobs objections and jo- Steve jobs wasn't perfect he saw the ipod as a way to differentiate the Mac. That was the Mac was his baby. That was Apple. Oh, people will buy Macs so they can get iPods. And he had to be persuaded that no, this is bigger than the Mac. This is a big deal. And we need to launch iTunes on Windows. iTunes on Windows is arguably the seminal event that led to the iPhone's dominance today. It Absolutely. broke Apple out of the 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 Mac sort of mindset and we you know it's so meaningful that when it, it one of the underrated parts of the initial iPhone announcement is Apple changed its name from Apple Computer to Apple Inc. They weren't a PC company anymore. They were they were a company that 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 served the broad range of sort sort of people's eyes. And so the iPod becomes huge and and it's this huge thing. And then again, the iPhone comes along. It's it's a natural thing to do after the iPod. Yes, it was incredible. It was also rumored for years and years and years because obviously that's the next step for sort of Apple to do. And, and so you have this combination. Now, the the iPhone was incredible because instead of just building on top of the iPod, they had a brief bake-off. Do we build on top of the iPod or do we come down from the Mac? And it was like Tony, it was like Scott Forstall versus like like uh, Tony Fidel, I think. And, and they agreed, no, it needs to be a small Mac. Inspired decision completely changed the industry. Your phone was now a computer instead of a consumer electronics device. And that was great leadership. That's your great man theory. Inventing a smartphone, that's structural forces. That was the mm-hmm. obvious thing to sort of do. How that manifested it was sort of the, the, the Steve Jobs effect. And what all these people that are pining for Steve Jobs, I think, are missing is the structural component. What is the structural force that Apple is failing to capitalize on? The structural right. force right now is AI. And, and so if you want to critique Apple, again, I think the most compelling critique of Apple right now is that their AI strategy makes a lot of sense. It's a great Wall Street story. We're going to specialize on the stuff we do good at and let everyone else spend hundreds of billions of dollars to create the AI that we will charge them to include on our phones and we'll charge their subscription prices or whatever it might be, like whatever the open AI deal sort of ends up being. And actually that is signing up to be a passenger 
on the greatest structural change that is going to hit technology and not actually putting at risk, not taking all those billions of dollars that, you know, they're occupied fighting who they get to pay taxes on to, whether it be the EU or, or the US, and, and 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 saying, no, we are going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars. What's the point of having an iPhone that generates so much surplus cash when we're going to sit on the sidelines of the greatest change that's impacting technology? If you want to critique Tim Cook, if you want to critique Apple, that's the angle. It's not that they didn't manifest something out of thin air when it comes to hardware and consumer electronics. Now, you maybe you say Apple's not good at AI. They should just be returning money to share her, shareholders. That's fine then. Then the answer isn't Steve Jobs. The answer is actually there should be a new CEO that's even more committed to returning money to shareholders that gracefully winds down the company because it's just sort of an adjunct to AI. And I don't think anyone wants that either. So so like, like right. uh, well, yeah. And, and there's a possibility that AI is a feature and not a product and pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into a chase for some mythical AI product that will reshape the way society interacts with technology. Maybe that product comes, but maybe it's 10 years from now or 15 right. years from and now. And maybe what Steve Jobs would do if he were here is he would have the, the whole thing with AI. The reason why I've argued that I think it's simultaneously transformative and also overrated in the short term is because it's so different. It's such a different way to approach things that it's like it's like the internet. It, it actually, the more transformative something is, the longer it takes to productize at scale because it just takes people a long time to wrap their heads around it and how it works and what its limitations are and what its strengths are. And Jobs was really good at that. Maybe Steve Jobs would help us figure out the compelling, the other thing about Apple intelligence, if you want to critique it, there's nothing original there. We're going to rewrite your email to have a nice tone, right? We're going <laughs> to yeah. like, 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 like one of the funniest things uh, in the, in the keynote presentation is th they have, so number one, the fact that Craig Federighi was in the presentation was actually for a close Apple watcher, a big deal. He's never in these presentations because these presentations are about hardware. He's the software guy. The fact he's there speaks to the fact that Apple's ongoing differentiation is software, which drives towards commoditization of their own devices. Number one, but number two, there was this email in sort of the demo he did where they did a bunch of bullet points, like like uh, party at XYZ, RSVP at five, da, da, da. And then they showed how Apple intelligence can make it into a nice long, like have make it into nice pros. And my thought was, I thought the bullet points were way better, right? Like, I don't want, Always I don't want to parse through this. Points. Yeah, <laughs> I want an AI that life. takes long pros and reduces the bullet points. And maybe Apple intelligence can really sort of be an Oberos here where someone can take their bullet points, they can tr transform it into pros that no one wants to read, and then your iPhone can take the pros and reduce it to bullet points so you can summarize it. That's kind of like what's being, what's being visualized here. We could use a product visionary for AI. Steve yeah. Jobs, Steve Jobs, foresaw this there's an amazing sort of clip that's been floating around about steve jobs talking about this device how computers in the long run are going to be these sort of answer machines and his description sounds a lot like what sort of chat gpt is today and maybe he actually i think undoubtedly he would have incredible sort of views and ideas of what this would sort of look like but but that's the whole thing it, it, i don't it, want to shortchange apple's foresight for the current era of AI. Like I actually think Apple intelligence correctly identifies the leverage point in the AI value chain over for the now. Next decade. Yeah. For now, uh, for the next five years. Okay. For the next five years. The company well, that maybe controls the next couple of years. I don't want to I don't want to make any of these. That's true. It moves pretty quickly, but I, I don't think that they have played this horribly, which was a narrative early on as AI exploded and ChatGPT took over the world. Is oh no, I don't think Apple they played horribly either. It. Yeah, and like, and I think we you, from the beginning, or at least I, I don't know, we were doing sharp tack back then. I wrote way back when ChatGPT came out that Apple's well positioned here, at least in in the short to right. medium term. And I think they've played it. They played it appropriately. They're also They're not investing in pursuing sort of you know 